Double Dragon just got even better than ever. Last year would see the release of a simply stupendous Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons, a game that would turn out to be not just one of the best Double Dragon games in a long time, but in my opinion, one of the greatest Double Dragon games ever made. Hitting all the right notes, this title already offered beat em up bliss, but thanks to newly released DLC, this game's quality has just ascended to even loftier heights. What makes this all the even sweeter though is that unlike most modern releases, this DLC is completely free, thus meaning there are new play modes to enjoy, a host of new fighters to players and so much more. The gaming experience has been enriched for everyone who has supported the game thus far. A breath of fresh air for sure and a vastly different approach than what's been taken in the more predatory fighting game space at present, so for that, Double Dragon, we salute you. Given everything that I've just mentioned so far in mind, join me today as we go back and revisit not only why this game is so great, but why you must play it and celebrate the amazing new features in the process too. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Double Dragon Guide and Rise of the Dragons just got even better. Turning back the clock to around this time last year, when I learned that a new Double Dragon game was being made, I'll be honest, I was excited, but at the same time, I was a bit worried. Double Dragon may be a franchise that established a cooperative beat em up genre, but at the same time, the series has always been like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. For every all time great, such as Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, or the amazing Double Dragon Advance, there are embarrassing turds, such as Double Dragon 5 or the dreadful Xbox 360 game. So holding these thoughts with the next chapter being written in Bimmy and Jimmy's roller coaster of an adventure, I was keen yet apprehensive to see what the next instalment would bring to the table. If you don't know already, let me tell you now, I freaking love Double Dragon and have always found the history of the series thoroughly fascinating. For this reason, I'm the only man on YouTube who's been crazy enough to upload singular deep dive videos covering every game from the franchise up until this point. In an equally crazy move, I even compiled the main parts of these into a ridiculously long 3 hour and 20 minute documentary, so I feel I have a decent grasp of what a good Double Dragon game is, and equally as importantly, what isn't. In fact, I have such an interest in these titles that I'm actually tempted to revisit them all soon and cover all of them all over again. I'm just that passionate about the series. To tell you the truth, I love brawlers in general, and I thoroughly enjoyed the beat-em-up renaissance that has been taking place in recent years. If you're watching this video, you likely love them too, so therefore I'd like to help you experience some of these greats for dirt cheap. Want 49% of Shredder's Revenge? A ludicrous 71% of River City Girls 2? Or an astonishing 78% of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World? All of these and many more great games can be purchased using my pinned Instant Gaming affiliate link. So use that now and happy shopping! Back in May of last year, I received an email in my inbox and a couple of YouTube comments that gave me goosebumps. These communications were from a man who was in charge of making the next entry in the Double Dragon series, who was contacting me to tell me that not only was a new Double Dragon game on the way, but he had been using this very channel as a research tool to learn more about the franchise and what fans liked and disliked about each of the games. This blew my mind because it meant I had gone from nostalgically covering Double Dragon's past to in my own minor way influencing the legendary series future. There is nothing more satisfying as a so-called professional influencer than apparently influencing things. So for this reason, I take full complete credit for Double Dragon going back in the right direction. Jokes aside, the man I spoke to on multiple occasions now over the last year, Raymond Teo and his team deserve all the credit. Rise of the Dragons is an absolute magnificent game, it's incredibly addictive and has turned out awesome. But as we dig deep into the stupendousness of this game, with now the inclusion of free DLC, it's also worth discussing its development history and how we got this great game in the first place. Raymond Teo is a Singapore native, still living and operating from there to this day. Like the majority of you watching this channel, Raymond grew up gaming with him personally starting on the NES before moving on to the Mega Drive, Super Nintendo and so forth. 
This meant he experienced the likes of the original Double Dragon, Streets of Rage, etc. all in their primes. By the time he had grown up, he alongside a friend would start a multimedia design studio and one of the elements of their business was creating advertising games. These were usually just micro games made using Flash, but Raymond recalls it being one of the most entertaining elements of his job. Not long after starting this endeavour, the Singapore government announced that they were offering a small grant to those that want to make video games. So he took the leap of faith to leave the design studio and start making games full time instead. This was around 2008, so it was unclear how much money he could actually make with indie games. So he would try everything from Flash games to Xbox Live indie games and mobile ones, with him eventually settling down on Steam. After a decade plying his trade, in 2018 one of his games known as Streets of Red was released on consoles, a zombie themed beat em up. When creating this critically well received game, Raymond notes that he learned a lot from this project and it was this very game that helped him the most in developing a Double Dragon game. Streets of Red gave him and those he worked with an instant head start on making Double Dragon Gaiden what it is, not just in terms of the feedback they gathered, but also how to build the tech needed that allowed them to create so many characters that can be played so differently. The wisdom from working on Streets of Red reduced the time they would have needed experimenting and instead gave them more time to make things work and make things fun. But still, none of this answers the question of how they went from working on this indie project to a legendary IP like Double Dragon. So, how did this happen? Well, according to Raymond, back when Streets of Red was first released on Steam in 2015 under the title of Devil's Dare, Arc System Works would be impressed with the game and reach out to him. Unfortunately, he'd already signed with a publisher at the time, so a collaboration did not happen. But in 2018, remembering their interest in his work, Raymond would decide to reach out back to them. Raymond recalled they had actually acquired the Double Dragon IP and just released Double Dragon 4 in 2017. He notes Double Dragon 4 was developed by the original Double Dragon developers, and you can tell it's a love letter to the classic NES version. Since they just tried that, he wondered if they would be interested in a version that pushes the IP in a much newer direction, so he reached out to them and pitched his grand vision. Raymond adds they really liked his ideas and appreciated his knowledge of the beat em up IP genre as a whole, but even then it seemed way too big of an IP to give it to a relatively unknown indie developer. Still Raymond pushed and after an entire year of discussion and persistence he finally managed to convince them to let him make a Double Dragon game. As awesome as this opportunity was, as we've seen in the past, making a good Double Dragon game is no easy feat, with there certainly being barriers in the way that could hinder Raymond's chances. Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons would be developed by Secret Base, who Raymond admits is mainly just him. He is the founder of the company and the creative vision holder, who tasked himself with handling design, art and the production of the new Double Dragon. To achieve this he worked with project partner Shan Yu, who was in charge of all the programming and technical challenges with the core team being just the two of them. Of course, to make a beat em up capable of competing with the best, like Shredder's Revenge and Streets of Rage 4, a game of such a scope cannot be done with just two people, so therefore they had the help of student interns and part-time designers. Two lads, Ray and Nicholas, worked with them during the late alpha and early beta stages of development, working on AI, character balancing, level integration and so on. To make development more of a tall task, the project was also done during the pandemic, so they had lots of help from freelance animators, composers, etc. from all over the world. Raymond notes that logistically it was crazy managing everyone from all parts of the world by himself, but it was also amazing to have everyone coming together to create such a special game. But perhaps most impressive about all of this is that the project was actually self-funded and Raymond ended up spending every penny he had ever made in the past to get this done. What made this the most challenging was because every licensed game has a time limit. Due to this, he had to get the game finished on time. The game was pretty much already done by the time they reached out to Modus to get funding for porting, QA support and help with marketing so they could get the word out. Overall, Raymond notes that it was an extremely tough challenge to get this game done with them introducing something new at every turn. Double Dragon Gaiden, being self-funded, also had a much smaller budget than other modern beat-em-ups, so trying to finish everything before the deadline was rough. 
Worst of all, halfway through development, Shan Yu, the game's only programmer, fell seriously ill and was not able to work for months. The illness badly affected his ability to speak, and it was unclear if he could continue to work on the project. Raymond notes they had already spent so much money, they had no choice but to continue. Only the two of them knew about this, as they didn't want to worry anybody else, and it was a lot to bear. Miraculously, they managed to effectively communicate with each other and kept the project moving, and thankfully Shun Yu got better as time went by. But Raymond adds it was 12 months of hell that he wouldn't wish on his worst enemy. So, as you can probably tell from all of this, nothing was stopping these boys from trying to produce simply one of the greatest Double Dragon games ever made. Grit, determination, blood, sweat and tears all went into this insane project. So let's begin to start talking about the results of a Double Dragon title that was secretly years in the making. Upon powering the game on, we instantly hear the classic Double Dragon theme tune, making long-term fans of the franchise feel pumped and at home right from the get-go. Before selecting story mode on the main menu, the option is there to also learn how to play at the bottom, which it does a great job of informing us about some of the changes this game contains to previous entries in the series. This option educates us that when playing story mode, we have the opportunity to earn and spend cash while playing the game. This cash can be gathered by defeating enemies and found within breakable objects, and when a game is over, the remaining cash is converted into tokens, which can be used to unlock new content in the game shop. That's right, unlike modern games that make you pay using real-world money to get unlockable DLC, like games of old, Double Dragon Gaiden is packed to the brim with content that you instead must unlock through skill and perseverance instantly giving us a reason to keep coming back for more. Building on the in-game money-making mechanic, when starting a new game in Gaiden, we the player can tweak the difficulty before a playthrough using the new game modifier. Essentially, changing the difficulty will also affect the token exchange rate, so the more you challenge yourself, the higher the reward will be on offer. Why can't all modern games reward us like this for getting good at them? In terms of improving this lucrative cash flow further, knocking out opponents using special moves results in them spilling more cash, and if you can manage to knock out multiple opponents at once with one of these blows, the rewards get even higher, including them dropping items that allow us to regain health. These triple or quadruple KOs are known as crowd controls, and are incredibly satisfying to pull off. Perhaps the most innovative feature, and one I cannot recall seeing in a beat em up before this one, is tag team action players. Holla holla holla. If you can remember how the tag team feature works in Marvel vs Capcom games, we have something similar in this one. Each character in play has a special meter, which can either be used to perform special moves or instead used to tag in your second character. Basically, on the player select screen at the start of a playthrough, you select two characters and can tag out whenever you have taken a lot of damage, or when you simply want to extend the combo. The character who has been switched out, like in Marvel vs Capcom, can also regenerate a portion of their HP, further adding to the strategy in this one. Every time you perform one of your extremely useful special moves, your special meter enters a cooldown phase to prevent naughty spamming. Fortunately, the meter recovers over time anyway, but the opportunity is there to speed it up by hitting or defeating enemies. If you like experimenting, different moves use different amounts of SP. Each character has specials that are useful for defense, and another for range, with a third that is unique to them, giving us plenty of options to try out. If your character gets knocked out, it is possible to revive them or purchase upgrades with your cash at the end of each sector. And as mentioned earlier, remaining cash after a playthrough is converted into tokens, with the additional bonus of your score being placed on the global leaderboard. Want to know something amusing? When this game first came out, due to getting a head start from owning a review copy for a while, I had the highest Double Dragon score on the entire planet, which not only made me the Double Dragon World Champion, but also the Wizard. Now, let's touch on the game's story. Upon embarking on a story mode playthrough, we are shown an amazingly old school looking cutscene, informing us that in the year 1990X AD, the world is in a state of decay. A nuclear war has ravaged cities and the population struggles to survive. New York City is now ruled by four major gangs. 
as the gangs fight for total dominance, riots and crime consume the streets. One day, at the Bimmy and Jimmy's dojo, a man we have never seen before walks in exclaiming, Is anyone here? This young lady needs help. Bimmy and Jimmy notice the woman is Marion and check on her to see if she's okay. The man explains he has not hurt her and he is the city's new mayor. Officer Marion was caught in a gang conflict during a patrol, but he managed to get her out. The mayor states he is looking for Bimmy and Jimmy's father and master of a dojo to bring the thugs down, but a new character known as Mattin steps in, informing the mayor he went missing. Marion, Bimmy and Jimmy decide they want to rage through the streets in a final fight against the gangs begging this mysterious Uncle Mattin to join them. Do so he does and the adventure is on, but who even is Uncle Mattin? Well, fortunately, I got full clarification from Raymond. With his introduction, Raymond adds, it was mostly a question of who to include in the starting roster. Billy and Jimmy are the must-have balance characters, and Marion was quite an easy choice because she's highly recognisable, and her identity as a police officer would allow interesting gun gameplay. For the fourth character, he wanted someone new to spice things up. Grapples are really popular, so he was first designed as a wrestler, but he thought since Marion uses a gun, it would be interesting if he uses a shield to complement that. On top of that, he also thought that a lot of gamers are probably older now, and since Double Dragon Gaiden is sort of an alternate timeline prequel, everyone is a lot younger. So he made him an older man, as he imagined a lot of players might play with their kids now, and they can play as Uncle Mattin to protect them. As to the name Mattin, he always found it intriguing that there was this building with the word Mattin on it in the original arcade game. If the brothers lived there, you'd imagine it saying Susetsu Ken Dojo or something like that. So when he came up with a character, who's supposed to be a guardian to the young Lee brothers, he thought it'd probably make more sense for him to be the owner of that place. Upon choosing your two characters for a playthrough, differently from previous Double Dragon games, we are brought to a mission select screen, where, like in a Mega Man game, we get to choose the order of which boss and stage area we tackle first. Speaking of which, the idea of including multiple different gangs with unique identities in the game is a nod to the Warriors, which is interesting as the reskin of Kunio Kun for the Western market known as Renegade was also inspired by the Warriors, so a nice callback there. Some of these crime lords you will recognise from previous games, such as the iconic machine gun Willy, or how about Duke? The often forgotten final boss from Super Double Dragon, due to the fact the team ran out of time and never got round to creating cutscenes to help fully establish him. When taking on these missions, what is particularly interesting is that the stage completely changed based on which order you choose to tackle them in, with the later you leave a gang unpunished, the more they will expand their operations and take over more sectors. This means you only have to clear one sector when tackling the first gang, but three sectors for the later crime lords. This means there are a variety of different routes to take through the game with different sectors to rampage through depending on the choices you make. In a separate interview with Game Rant, Raymond commented on this implementation, adding it was included as it really has to do with replayability. I understand with past beat em up games, like in our memory, those games lasted for quite a while. In truth though, a lot of these games were less than 60 minutes. Then you replay them again and again and again. This time around, I wanted to make sure that when you replay the game, there were different things that you can explore and alternate routes. With each run, the players can actually change to a different character or combination of characters. They can explore different routes. Each time they play, they will see different things that enhance the experience and keep them gaming. Throughout these playthroughs, you will notice easter eggs and stage features aplenty that are callbacks to various other games in the series. Raymond notes that not only did he use all the games for inspiration, but even the movie and the animated TV show too. This game really is a celebration of everything Double Dragon. Speaking of everything Double Dragon, this is too reflected in the game's music, with each piece from the game's soundtrack being amazing rearrangements of various iconic catchy tunes from this franchise's iconic past. This game is amazing. Adding to the excellence of all of this, we of course also now have the extra DLC content. 
Remember those tokens we mentioned earlier? Well, thanks to the DLC, we not only have brand new ways to collect them, but more awesome characters to unlock using them too. Through using such tokens, we could already unlock some amazing fighters, who could be made playable alongside the game's initial four base selectable ones. These include classic imposing brutal demoths such as Burnoff and Abobo, professional iconic dominatrix Linda and Chintai Mi, along with all five of the game's boss characters. Joining this motley crew, we now have three more to unlock, so let's run through them. First we have Chin Si Mi, the master of the fierce tiger splendid mountain fist who first appeared as a boss in Mission 2 in Double Dragon 3. If defeated, the slow moving fighter could become a member of the team's party and he's back for this adventure too. Also first debuting as a boss in the arcade version of Double Dragon 3, Yagyu Renzoi makes a return, a ninja master member of a secret society of assassins. But it is the third throwback to this much maligned arcade game who interests me the most. I am of course referring to the comeback of the infamous Sonny Lee, a man who seemed to be the mysterious third Lee brother who seemingly went missing for decades. Hilariously though, he seems to be making somewhat of a comeback tour in recent years, with his appearance in Double Dragon Gaiden seemingly being his most remarkable appearance yet. After being missing for 27 years, he resurfaced as a playable fighter in Double Dragon 4, but we were given no background story, allowing us to know anything more about this enigmatic character. In 2022, he would show up in River City Girls 2, a game which would hilariously depict him, proclaiming he is the third Double Dragon brother, with other characters in the game, Marion included, claiming they don't have a clue who he is. Here, he defensively replies that just because he doesn't appear in every adventure doesn't mean he isn't just as important as the other Lees. But the girls state that is exactly what it means. As for his emergence in Double Dragon Gaiden, this provides the greatest depiction of the character yet, providing the most lore around this fighter that any game was provided in history. It states that Sonny is the lazy, distant cousin of the Lee brothers, but just like Billy and Jimmy, he has practiced the art of Susetsuken since he was young. However, Sonny has a hard time keeping up. He opts to give the ancient technique his own creative spin and now wanders the streets to test the might of his new moves. Essentially fighting with what looks more like a drunken fist style of martial arts, it looks like between this video game and River City Girls 2, Sonny is sort of being positioned as the Dan Habiki of the Double Dragon universe. And it kind of works. I also like that in both of these games, he looks incredibly tired and drug ruined, leaving us to guess who knows what he's been up to in the 27 years he went missing. When speaking to the PlayStation blog about this character, Raymond states that as a fighter, Sonny distinguishes himself as a rushdown offensive warrior. He executes an action attack similar to a quick breakdance maneuver that travels a short distance and covers threats from all directions. Despite his Susetsuken roots, we wanted to ensure that Sonny is his own character and he is designed to play differently from Billy and Jimmy with much more eccentric moves. His role as the familial outcast significantly influences his fighting style, resulting in a blend of showboating and non-traditional stances. Sonny's distinctive approach to combat reflects his individuality within the family dynamic, which gives him more depth and personality, allowing him to shine brighter in the game. Beyond adding the best lead to the game, both a versus mode and online co-op mode have been added to the title, the latter of which has been long time requested by fans. Out of a new play mode addition though, my personal favourite is the game's survival mode, which allows us to play stage after stage wiping out wave after wave of enemies, with the difficulty being increased each round. When we pair this with the reward of getting far more tokens the deeper you can survive into display mode, like most other elements of this title, it's incredibly addictive, and the feature of the title I am finding myself revisiting the most at present. Something I have yet to touch on, which I feel I perhaps should, is the game's graphics. I recall when we first looked at the trailer for this game last year, my comment section in particular were not big fans of the game's art style, with the most common complaint being that they did not feel this looked like a Double Dragon game. My personal response to that would be, what the bloody hell does a Double Dragon game even look like? 
as from my memory playing every game in the series, the graphical styles and art direction taken game to game is even more varied than the franchise's roller coaster quality. Even the arcade games and NES games that share the same names look completely different from one another, and Double Dragon 5 looks nothing like Double Dragon Neon, and that game looks nothing like the Double Dragon movie game for the Neo Geo Arcade. What sews most of the franchise together in my opinion is the series occurring music, and this one as mentioned has all the iconic tracks in abundance. As you've probably seen from my leaderboard score I showed you, I enjoyed this game a lot when it came out, and I have chosen to play through it over and over, checking out different routes and different bosses. In fact, since the game's DLC has been released, I have now put so much time into the game that I have unlocked all of its Steam achievements too, including the Completionist one, which apparently only 5% of players managed to unlock. The game is highly, highly addictive, easily the most addictive Double Dragon game I've ever played, and in my opinion, in terms of fun factor, right up there with Streets of Rage 4 and Shredder's Revenge. This game is just that freaking good. Perhaps one of the craziest features amongst the many unlockables are the huge roster of additional playable characters, each with their own strengths, weaknesses and special moves. A feature of the game that has only got more insane since the addition of the DLC. After all, who doesn't have a strange fascination with the curiosity that is Sunny Lee? Due to this cornucopia of characters, the experimentation options are absolutely tremendous, leading to excellent replayability. Questioning Raymond Thurver about this fantastic game, he stated that he thinks a great beat em up is one that makes you come back for more and helps you de stress after a hard day at work or they just function as games you want to turn on and have a good time. In the past, they used to be great arcade experiences where you and your friend could have a memorable time together, and imagine those same people from back in the day are now older and play the game with their kids too. As for the genre's rise in popularity, he thinks the community has always been there for these sort of games, with the videos on my channel for example proving there is a crowd who are highly passionate about these titles. As for their disappearance and recent re-emergence, Raymond suggests that AAA studios never want to make them, and indie developers were not able to handle them up until recent years. This is because beat-em-ups require a lot of intense artwork and animation, and players expect them to not only be multiplayer, but they must be online as well, making it such a high barrier of entry for indie developers. Part of the reason why we're seeing more of them now is because the indie scene is getting more and more saturated, so developers are looking to make genres that others couldn't or haven't, so as to stand out from the crowd. At the same time, the tools have now made certain development work easier, and the teams are getting bigger, allowing developers to take on bigger games. This is why beat-em-ups are back, and only getting better and better. As for Double Dragon Gaiden, Raymond wishes to introduce some new design experience to the genre, and to hopefully push it forward, even if just a little. The franchise has had a rocky history, so he hopes that players can see the effort that has been put in to bring the Double Dragon franchise back into the limelight. As for what he is most proud of, of all with this one, it's the game's loop in nature and how players are motivated to play the game repeatedly to unlock more characters, adjust for difficulty and play again. I have already played this game thoroughly and absolutely love it, but I thought it would be interesting to ask Raymond how he would sell the experience to others, with him informing me that if you're a fan of the beat em up genre in general, he believes you will find enjoyment in the many innovations they've introduced to the game ranging from the tagging mechanic, roguelite elements, and the many different unique characters you can play as. And if you're not familiar with the genre, he'd say beat-em-ups are traditionally the easiest action games you can get into and have fun with. The game's dynamic difficulty allows you to tweak the difficulty how you like it, and allows you to learn and get better, and you can slowly increase the difficulty as you improve. Don't be frightened of the roguelite elements they have implemented, as the goal of a game is not to kill the player repeatedly, but for you to play and win repeatedly, each time trying to do better than your last try. And speaking of which, I guess it is for these very reasons why I found myself so bloody addicted to this game, finding the same enjoyment from it to playing it today as I did last year. Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons is simply stupendous, and perhaps the greatest Double Dragon game ever made, and most certainly the most enjoyable in the modern era. Combine all this with free DLC that has expanded this experience even further, how can you not be a super fan of this product? 
I highly recommend that you buy this game and play it now. Beat em ups don't get better than this one. Anyway, if you like the look of this one, check it out now. And if you already own it, jump on that free DLC. I promise you won't be disappointed. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget you can support this channel and get cheap deals using my Instant Gaming affiliate link. Or if you want to support my work in a more personal way, please consider backing my show over on Patreon. <laughs> Cheerio.